Hi everyone, it's Heather with Warm and Bright. Uh, this week I decided I would try to do a little mini tutorial on these little fabric catch-all boxes that I make. Actually I should show this one since this is the finished version. Um, the original project idea and tutorial is actually by Crafty Gemini and I'll put a link down in the bottom to the original tutorial. The way she made them um, used a felt sheet and a um, layer cake square which layer cakes are 10 by 10 the felt is 9 by 12 so what she did was she just set them together and trimmed off the excess. Well, I decided on my next one I made to use a fat quarter and I just trimmed the fabric to the size of the actual felt square so I wasn't losing any um, material. So to give you an idea of the difference in size, and this is actually the one I use for all of my uh, little wonder clips and things, but there is a good bit of difference in size in these. This this one will actually nest inside the other one with space left over. There we go. So there is quite a bit of difference. Now with these, like I said, it uses uh, just a regular felt square you can find in your craft stores. I've been finding these with the pat with the patterns uh, in my clearance section. So instead of paying like 50 cents, I've been getting them for like 25. Uh, Joanne's had a sale for a week or two where they were three for a dollar. So I've been trying to get them when they've been really cheap. Uh, but one of the other options you can do, if you're not looking for patterned ones, they I know Joann's sells uh, felt by the yard. Uh, it comes on a bolt, and it's actually I want to say it's wider than uh, the standard 44 inch. So you're actually getting a lot more. Um, you're just not getting all of the nifty little patterns and things. But just depends on what you're looking for because you can always make it up with, you know, decorative fabrics on the outside. Like with this one, I had pattern inside and just used plain on the outside. Uh, with these I'm making, it's got pattern, but it's kind of a subtle pattern. This is just kind of that grunge print stuff. This one, which I'm actually going to be showing a little bit on, I have patterned, but then I also have patterned. <laughs> so it just, but this is more of a subtle pattern where that's definitely not. So it just depends on what you're looking for and the way of, you know, style, tastes. Um, but they're really easy to make, they don't take long at all. Like I said, the materials in general, you could make these for less than a, well, each box would come out to less than a dollar uh, because with the fat quarters, I actually wind up using just about a quarter of a fat quarter. So, you know, depending on what fabrics you use, what felt you use, if you find them on sale, you know, you can get these things for real. you could make these for really cheap. And they're great little, you know, like I said, I use this one to put my little wonder clips, my tape measure, I've got some buttons in here, you know, just the little things that don't really have a place to put on your sewing table. Uh, I've had a, a lady say she was uh, she actually bought a bunch to give to her friends and uh, for when they travel that way they can set all of their uh, glasses jewelry you know that kind of stuff in a place where you know it's all consolidated it's right next to the bed 
pick it up in the morning. It's all together. You don't have to worry about it when you're traveling. I thought that was a really neat idea. Uh, another lady suggested, you know, putting it in drawers and putting little things in there. So, you know, it's just a catch-all box. You can put anything you want in there. And they're pretty good size. Uh, so, I mean, your uh, rotary cutter will fit in there. Small ruler, <laughs> which actually that does give me the ability to tell you the size on this. Okay, this one's unfinished. The finished version is actually not as wide. It's got a finished size of seven inches. So you do lose a couple inches, you know, what, seven? You're losing two and a half inches on the side, on each side, lengthwise for the fell. But, you know, it's seven inches long. And if you were buying felt by the yard and using, uh, you know, either fat quarters or, you know, fabric by the yard, you can make these any size you want. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to make them this size. This was just the easiest way I found to do it with the least amount of waste. With the one uh, the Crafty Gemini did, like I said, she wound up cutting off two inches of the felt and an inch of the uh, layer cake square, which then on top of that, you have to cut out 10 inch squares on the corners or two inch squares on the corners. So, you know, there is a little more waste on that. So, you know, this was just easier for me. So because I still don't have a good sewing setup, I am going to do this in stages just so you can get an idea of how it's going to look in the process. I can do the cutting out uh, <clears throat> just to get started and then I'll show you the different stages after that. So give me just a second and I have to apologize my left shoulders kind of messed up so if I wind up suddenly stopping in my speech is because I pulled it wrong and it kind of hurts so let's get this set up so you can see what I'm doing actually let's do this maybe a little bit trying to get this set up so you can see there we go Oh, that's not too bad. So, as I was saying, this is a basic fat quarter. Joanne's had them on sale, or had a coupon, 70% off. So, yeah, I kind of stocked up at the time. This was on sale for $0.50, cent, or on clearance for $0.50. Cent. So, you know, like I said, it's actually pretty cost-effective. So the way I do this, I've already uh, pre-ironed my fat quarter, even though it's kind of hard to tell with those major creases that get in there. Now, like most fat quarters, this is not straight. You can kind of see where it's a little, you know, poking out a little on the edges. It's not too bad on the bottom. So what I do, and conveniently enough, since it is 12 inches, it's exactly the size of my ruler. I just trim up. And actually, the felt isn't always square either, so keep that in mind. And I just come up here and write like that. Now, the question is, is this actually cutting through? There we go. Always close your rotary cutter. Mine, mine only comes out when I pull the trigger and it has this little safety pop button on it. So, you know, you have to, it's locked, it won't come out, but always make sure you close up your rotary cutter so you don't have any unfortunate accidents. 
while this fabric is red, you know, you don't necessarily want to be bleeding all over it. And those things are very sharp. I uh, accidentally ran in, <laughs> ran mine into my finger one day and didn't even feel it. It was that sharp. I was cutting something and I went forward and then, you know, kind of came back a little and I was doing what you're not supposed to do for one thing. And it just barely bumped into my finger. I didn't even feel it. And next thing I know, I'm bleeding all over the place. So, yeah, always close your rotary cutters. Now then, now that I've done this, I really should have laid that face down first because you need these to be facing each other. And since I cut it to match the one side, it won't necessarily match up with the other side, which I have found out the hard way a couple times now because I always forget, but that's all right. It's not a big deal. This project is very forgiving. If you're a little off, it's not going to, you know, it's not the end of the world. I'm just, just cleaning this up a little bit. Um, one thing I've found is uh, when I'm working on this, if I have an oddball spot in the process of um, cleaning or sewing things up, I just take my scissors and trim off whatever extra there is. No big deal. Very forgiving. But if you can get things squared up a little bit and start, it'll help. All right. I think we're good here. Now then. So, my fabric now is more or less the same size as my felt. And what you are going to do from here, once again, um, front sides facing or right sides facing, however you want to put it. What you're going to do from here, and I'm going to use my new little ruler I got. Um, there we go. You're going to cut two inch squares out of each corner. Actually, now that I just did that, Okay, didn't do too bad. Let me rephrase this. What you want to do is draw two inch squares in each corner uh, using whatever fabric marking tool you prefer. prefer. Uh, this is one of those uh, friction pens that comes off with heat. Now, the caveat to that is uh, it doesn't necessarily come off of all fabrics. With I found out with darker fabrics, and this was mentioned in several comments I've read around, uh, in darker fabrics it will leave a ghost image behind, a little white line. So depending on where you're marking your fabrics, you may want to do a test swatch first and make sure that it's going to come off before uh, you actually mark where you need it. Now, the reason I stopped using the rotary cutter on this, you want to make sure that you don't go past these little two inch marks, which you might do using the rotary cutter. So,
So first, just go ahead, mark out your squares. This is a two and a half inch ruler, so. <laughs> All right, now from here, what you would do is get your scissors and I'll pull this up here so you can see my little marks. From here, all you're going to do is get your scissors and cut out these squares. Uh, like I said, you want to make sure that you don't go past those corners because it'll show up in the actual bag. So that's why you don't want to use the rotary cutter because you might get carried away. It's hard to tell where you stop with it, uh, that kind of thing. So just so you know, draw out your squares, then use scissors. Once that is done, you're going to have a piece that looks more or less like this. Oh, there's the front and the back. I'm going to go ahead and flip these back out so you can actually see the way it'll look. So, this is the way it actually looks. There's your felt. Wrong, your wrong sides are facing out. And just do a normal quarter inch seam on each of the four long sides. You are ignoring these openings. Do not stitch anything here or you're not going to be able to turn your bag out for one. Uh, so yeah, just quarter inch seam all the way down these edges. Then, once that's done, you flip it back out. Which is really easy on this project. Now, once I have them flipped out, I generally kind of just finger press them down a little bit on the edges to kind of get the seams going, you know, a little bit flatter before I go and iron this out. Now, this is, this is very important. <laughs> when you're ironing, make sure you are ironing on the fabric side, not on the felt side. Because unless you have spent the money for real wool felt, this is plastic. <laughs> it will melt. You don't want this to melt on your iron. You don't want it to melt through your fabric. You don't want it to melt, period. So when you're ironing, do not iron on the felt. Iron on the fabric. Uh, it's post-consumer waste, whatever. It's recycled plastic. Uh, so, you know, on the one hand, it is very, you know, it is a good product. They're reusing and recycling and all of that. But it is a synthetic product. It will melt. Don't iron it. So, once you have it ironed, you're going to... Now, this seems kind of counterproductive, but we are doing a French seam. So what you're going to do is match up your corners with the fabric side, which is going to be the outside of your box on the inside. So you're not doing this. You're matching side to side, just folding in half. And this is where I'll kind of stick a, uh, one of these little clippy things just kind of right on the edge just to make sure that I've got the edges more or less lined up. It probably will shift a little bit when you're stitching. So, you know, it'll be, it might be offset a little, but I try to keep them as even as possible. So what you're going to do, fabric side, which is going to be the outside of your box, goes on the inside. You're going to stitch a quarter of an inch right down that seam. If you see me doing this, it's because my screensaver kicks on and the screen goes black. So, once again, 
you're going to sew a quarter inch seam right down that line. Then you're going to come to the next side and repeat the process. And you're going to do that on all four sides. And that gives you something that looks like this. So you've got these raw edges exposed. and your fabrics on the inside. Now, from this point, you are going to flip your bag right side up for your box. And you get something that looks kind of like that. Now, this is where I once again start employing those little clips because what you're going to do, wait for my camera to focus, you're going to fold these together just like you did before same corners same seams match up your tops as well as possible use a clip if you need to and what you're going to do is you are going to stitch right down as close as you can to that seam so you know you're enclosing that seam right there so stitch down as close as you can. You don't want to stitch on it because that is a lot of thickness with what four layers of felt and four layers of fabric. Your needle probably won't like it. So just stitch as close as you can down next to it. And you're going to do that on all four sides. Now one thing I did forget to mention when you are stitching these Make sure you are back stitching at the beginning and end of each side because you don't want any loose, you know, you don't want your threads coming loose, especially once you get to the outside and you're finishing this off. So, you know, once again, just quarter of an inch. I generally start from the bottom side of the bag and go up to the top it just seems to work easier for me and when you are done you are going to wind up with something that looks like this now I went ahead and just used the white thread I had been using or off-white thread you can definitely use coordinating thread I didn't think it really mattered with this one it's not all that noticeable so there you can see wait for my camera where you know stitched as close as possible to those folds and you're probably going to wind up having to do some trimming of loose uh, threads the um, tails of your threads when you've been sewing. You just want to trim them down as close as you can. Uh, any loose threads from your fabric you're going to want to trim down just so you have a nice finished look to it. So, like I said, quick kind of tutorial on how to make these little fabric uh, boxes that I've been making. Uh, for those that are curious, uh, like I said, I've actually managed to sell a few, yay, and I sold them for five bucks um, each. So if anybody's curious, if you're doing it for craft fair, or, uh, flea market or something, that's how much I'm selling them for. So, you know, really it depends on how much you're spending on your materials because, you know, you need to make a profit. <laughs> You know, unfortunately, you know, we have, we as crafters doing this to make money, we do have to make a profit. Materials cost money and fabric's not cheap. So keep that in mind. Don't undercut yourself, you know, as much as we want to be, you know, generous and go, yeah, I'd sell it for two. If you're spending a dollar to make it, you know, that's not even counting time. So do keep it in mind. And also, as somebody else mentioned, you know, if you are undercutting your price, you're actually hurting other people, other crafters as well, 
because especially on places like Etsy because people are going to look at yours and go oh well you're selling it for five but they're selling it for two I'll just go buy it from them well if there's 50 people selling for five and this one person selling for two they're gonna get all the business so you know keep that in mind you know try to help out your fellow crafters in the long run you know it really does help all of us so that's my little soapbox moment as well but I hope this uh, helped and I uh, will see you guys next time see ya